Well, when I was thinking about this discussion, I read Lawrence Krauss's book, um, Something from Nothing, because that's the uh, most popular version of this debate from the cosmological point of view at the moment. And what struck me about it, and what struck me about most arguments, is how conservative they are. If you look at traditional discussions of why there's something rather than nothing, um, the traditional ones are theological discussions, um, they start from the assumption that there's a source of all things which is threefold. In Kashmiri Shaivism, it's called Parashiva, the unified source of all things, with Shiva, which represents the principle of form or order, and Shakti, which represents the principle of energy or power. In the Christian version of the Holy Trinity, you have God, the ground of all being. You have the Logos, which is the mind of God, the form, the source of all forms. And you have the Spirit, which is the source of energy, movement, and power. Well, in Lawrence Krauss, uh, you have a source uh, which he doesn't discuss, but it has two manifestations. One, the laws of nature, um, which may be uh, the field of all possible laws of nature that may apply to all universes, but that's taken for granted as pre-existing. And then you have the quantum vacuum, which is the source of all potential uh, energy and power for this and all other universes. In other words, it's exactly like Shakti, and his role of the laws of nature is exactly like Shiva, or, or the Logos and the spirit. Um, so the, the, uh, this seemingly radical atheistic view is extraordinarily conservative in philosophical and theological terms. It just rephrases them, and with a few kind of polemical jabs against sort of old-fashioned theologians, uh, he's basically restated the ancient case for the existence of God. Um, <laughs> He goes even further. Um, he says in, in that the, uh, it's the nature of the quantum vacuum is so unstable that it almost inevitably would give rise to a universe through a kind of fluctuation. So, okay, let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The earth was without form, the world was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the deep, or the face of the waters. Well, the quantum vacuum's pretty well a modern version of the face of the deep. And if the spirit of God, the wind, moves on the face of the deep, it creates waves. And the waves presumably follow a law-like structure. So what struck me about all this uh, was that the debate is essentially a theological debate that's been reframed in these modern physical terms. And the really interesting question for me about it is that in the theological debate, the ground of all this is conscious. Whereas for Lawrence Krauss, a materialist and an atheist, the ground of all this is unconscious. Now, um, it's a matter of faith either way, I suppose. Um, but as far as I can see, uh, the advantage of the ultimate ground of being being conscious has, first of all, uh, you don't, you're, it, there's a basis for these rational laws instead of the laws of nature being free-floating mathematical abstractions that are outside space and time, that apply to all possible universes, that are ultimately metaphysical in the ultimate sense of metaphysics as being beyond physics. Um, that um, they, 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 You've got free-floating laws which have no ontological basis whatever. Um, and then you have human minds that appear mysteriously in an unconscious universe and can actually understand these laws, although we've evolved by evolutionary psychology of sort of using stone tools and uh, primitive uh, campfire-type techniques, uh, our minds are somehow able to comprehend uh, the entire universe so that there can be someone like Krauss putting forward theories about the ultimate nature of reality. Well, if there's a conscious basis for both reality and for human minds, the traditional view, this makes a lot more sense. Um, uh, take that away and we're left with a kind of unconscious version of traditional theology and a lack of explanation for the existence of minds of any kind, including those of physicists, um, which in philosophy of mind is called the hard problem. <laughs> for more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.